For today's episode, we're going to take a budget mining approach to cleaning a record. We've limited ourselves to $150, and that's for everything, brushes, liquids, everything. Before we get to that, however, I wanted to share with you the record that we've picked to clean. Maybe you turn you on to a new musician that I like very much. I think he's really an underrated composer and improviser. This is Henry Threadgill. He's a saxophonist and flautist from Chicago, been around a very long time, still with us, in fact, and yesterday was his 80th birthday, so happy belated birthday, Henry. If you're into Charles Mingus or maybe Duke Ellington, but like a little experimental edge to your music, definitely want to check out Threadgill. That really sums up his approach to music, I think. He got his start in Chicago with the AACM. That's the Association for the Advancement of Creative Music. I know this organization. I actually played with them myself some 20 plus years ago. He, Henry Threadgill is a very prolific leader. Lots of albums out there. He's rec- This one is on Novus, which is owned by Arista. He's also recorded with Black Saint. So if you're into the more experimental side of his music, check out the Black, uh, Black Saint recordings. Really good stuff. He's also been a sideman with some great players like David Murray, uh, Roscoe Mitchell, Bill Laswell, Jack DeJanette, and he even did a thing with the Kronos Quartet, which I think is pretty cool. This particular album, which is called Easily Slip Into Another World, is, is from 1988. Let's take a closer look. This, by the way, is with his sextet. Oddly called the sextet. It's actually a, seven members in this band, but there's two drummers which I guess he just considered one. That's the very recognizable red label of Novus. We'll show you the dirt in the groove so you can see just how effective our cleaning process is. Let's get to it. Let's clean this record. Okay, let's talk about what options we have at a $150 threshold. The first thing we should consider is a simple carbon fiber brush for about 20 bucks or so. That's the most basic thing that you can use to clean a record. It's not going to really get it clean, but it's certainly better than doing nothing. An alternative to a carbon fiber brush, and one that I actually prefer, is the Giotto Blaster. I think this does a better job of removing the large debris. We're going to suggest the Giotto Blaster with whatever we ultimately end up recommending. But if you're on a really tight budget, I'm talking like 20 bucks, I would go with this. The next thing to consider is the ever popular spin clean. A lot of these units have been sold. Ultimately, however, I'm not going to recommend it, man. Here's why. These are going for $80 now, which for what you get, this plastic tub, it's a fair bit of money. And I wouldn't recommend the spin clean unless you have two of them. One in which you would have record cleaning fluid, the other a pure water rinse. They're very basic the way they work. There's little rollers that fit in the side, uh, brushes that go down into slots and you manually loop, move it through the liquid. It works great as a pre-soak, that's the reason we have one, but I'm afraid it would go over our $150 limit if you had two of these, and I frankly wouldn't do it unless you could have two. There is an alternative called the Studebaker. Very similar to the Spin Clean and about half the price, 43 bucks on Amazon. So that's one option is to get two of these, again, one with record clean fluid and one with water. However, our recommendation is going to be the Disc Doctor. The Disc Doctor brushes, they're fluid, some pure water. We can do all of this for under 150 bucks, and I think that's your best bet for a really thorough clean on a budget. We'll start off with the Giotto Blaster. You're obviously going to need the Disc Doctor brushes. They, you can buy them individually, but I would recommend you buy two. They also are sold in pairs, one for the record cleaning fluid and one for the pure water. You need some sort of bowl, of course, to brush off the, uh, the liquid from the brushes along the edge. I would go with the Disc Doctor's Miracle Record Cleaning Fluid. It's a good uh, record cleaning fluid, for, particularly for their brushes. You'll need a pure water. This one is from AIVS. 
We also like to keep a little ketchup bottle of pure water for cleaning the brushes in between sides. You're going to need a microfiber cloth, some, one that's nice and thick and plush is best in my experience. Oh, also a soft toothbrush that helps keep the brushes clean in between records. And then lastly, um, a dish rack of some sort. This is a one made of plastic. You can also get them where they're metal coated in rubber because we don't have a way to dry these with any sort of mechanism, right? So we're going to let them air dry and putting them in a rack like this is a great way to do it. Okay, we're going to start off by cleaning our brushes. You'll note that we have each brush dedicated one to the record cleaning fluid, one to the water. By the way, this tape is called console tape. Here, this kind of stuff. This is designed to be put onto mixing boards where engineers would mark what channel relates to what microphone slash instrument. The reason that these are good for this purpose is they're naturally water resistant. If you use a permanent marker like a Sharpie and mark it on there, it's not going to come off as it gets wet. So a little helpful hint to keep your brushes marked. First thing we want to do is use the toothbrush to get off any debris. Take our water and just run the brush over the edge. Now that's ready to go. And we'll do the same thing with the water brush. By the way, when you buy these brushes, the replacement pads will come with them, which is nice. They do wear out eventually. A little bit of water there, run it over the edge, and you're good to go. We want to hit it with the Giotto blaster, blow off any of the large debris. We'll do it. Always start with side A, my recommendation. All right, this one is dedicated to the fluid. By the way, when you buy a larger bottle, it comes with this little one, which is nice. And you want to apply it directly to the brush. And just cover the brush. And the idea then is to go back and forth, and cover a quarter to a third of the record. One of the things you'll notice right off the bat is how incredibly deep the bristles of this brush get into the groove. They really grab. Works up a nice bubbly lather. Now if we were to utilize a suction type machine with this process, which we've done in previous episodes, you just plop it on there and bring the liquid right off the record. We're doing a manual approach today. So the idea here is to take the edge of the brush, run it around the record, and do your best to pick it off like that. And we'll clean it. There's a lot of cleaning of the brush required with this process. There you go. Maybe one more time. Now before I just jump right into the water rinse, I like to give it a second scrub with the record cleaning fluid. Just to show you how deep into the groove these brushes go, check this out. How about that? It actually grabs right a hold of the record. It's such a tight fit there with the groove. Okay, once again, take the edge, around you go. It'll take a few goes to get the majority of the record clean fluid off the record. Just use that edge. Okay. Now we'll set that brush aside. Okay, now we're going to apply the pure water to the brush dedicated to that. Same idea, get the brush wet. Just spread it about a bit, get more water. 
same technique. more time. You can probably see there's still some bubbles in there, so we haven't gotten all of the record cleaning fluid off. And again on the edge of the brush. There's the both sides. There you go. Okay, now what to do at this point? The record is clean, but it's still wet. We can uh, swap it out for another, which is what I'm going to do. If you're not in a hurry, one option is to clean one side at a time. And maybe if you're cleaning multiple records, just clean side A with several records, put them into the dish rack and let them dry. Once they're dry, then you can flip them over and go to side B, that's one option. Today, however, we'll just set this aside. We'll open up another fresh, clean microfiber cloth. Let's hit it with the Giotto Blaster on side B. And set the wet side down. Now we will tackle side B. Again, starting with the fluid. By the way, this doctor does make two kinds of fluid. One is a light fluid that's intended for a quick clean. I would not recommend that for this budget-oriented approach. Stick with the Miracle Record Cleaner. Okay. First application, here we go. Incredible gripping power, these brushes. You don't have to press too hard here, but because we're on a flat, hard surface, you can put a little more pressure than you would with other types of brushes. Look at that, just grabs and grabs. <laughs> okay, let's get that initial application off as best we can. Nice to have a little bowl with a soft edge so you can scrape off the contaminated fluids. Second application of the record clean fluid. extra care to wash off the fluid from the edge of the brush because that's what I'm going to use to pick up as much of the fluid off the vinyl as possible. Just like that. Other side now for the inner part of the record. There we go. Pretty good so it's ready for next time and now we'll go to our water brush did a pretty good job there getting the fluid up by the way the disc doctors products are available through elusive disc very good online retailer as well as Chad Kasim's Acoustic Sounds. The second and final of your water. And of course, if you're dealing with a very dirty record, there's no reason why you couldn't do three, four, five applications of both the fluid and the pure water. It's 
take our initial swipe. Now I recommend hitting the side that we placed onto the microfiber cloth one more time, just in case it picked up any fuzzies, and then we'll set it in the dish rack and let it air dry. All right, once this dries, we'll take it down, give it a listen, see if we've done justice to this wonderful album. Okay, final thoughts and for the record. You know, while we were filming this episode, we got a call from our dear friend Zev Schlick. Zev owns Pure Audio Project speakers. Those are the large red speakers that you see behind us with every introduction. He is one of the world's foremost musicologists and frankly, just music lovers. And we got into a long conversation about how much we both love Henry Threadgill. So, I would say if you have any appreciation for Charles Mingus or Duke Ellington and appreciate a little, at least a little bit of experimental touch, definitely check out Henry Threadgill. Wonderful stuff. This is a good starting point, but frankly, all of his records are just treasures as far as I'm concerned. Let's get to the cleaning process. The current retail cost of everything that we use to clean this record, and even with typical sales tax, it comes in just under 150 bucks. That's pretty cheap by today's audiophile standards. And you'll see in the before and after pictures, we got it pretty darn clean. Is it as clean as when we utilize these sometimes very expensive machines and complex processes? No, it is not. But I tell you what, it did a very good job and certainly much better than not cleaning at all. So if you're in the market for a budget approach, we highly recommend The Disc Doctor. We highly recommend Henry Threadgill. We'll see you at the next record.